Hey everybody, it's Dr. Mystical and welcome to another episode of Tarot Tuesday. This week, episode number 54, the long-awaited, much-anticipated, heavily voted upon Eight Coins Tattoo Tarot. This was a deck that has been widely requested by the um, Dr. Mystical community, and I'm glad that I could finally bring it, even though I didn't put it out to a community vote, and I just brought it out. So if you are just watch, just getting here, um, you know the deal. Let me know um, if you can see it, hear it. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a heart. Uh, like the video, share the video, whatever it is that you want to do with it. That's perfectly fine with me. A uh, couple of announcements before I start taking requests, of course. <clears throat> if you haven't seen the Hero's Journey Dream Oracle uh, unboxing. You should check that out on my YouTube channel. Uh, the deck itself is absolutely amazing. <clears throat> and we really enjoy doing one card pulls on Sunday um, in, in anticipation of that unboxing. So go check that out and get the deck if you're interested from Goddess Elite. Um, additionally, I want to thank everybody who signed up for the Dr. Mystical uh, mailing list. I do appreciate that. Um, through the month of November, I offered uh, anyone who was signing up for the list, you were, entered into a, uh, you were entered into a random drawing for a first edition, um, get a first edition set of dice. And I'm happy to say that um, Kim Kerrigan from the Dr. Mystical community won the dice. And so her dice are on their way, should be there by the end of the week. Hopefully she'll enjoy them as much as I do and we do on the show. And third, of course, I want to announce uh, again the Southwest South, Southwest Florida UFO Paranormal Con on the 12th and 13th of January in Fort Myers, Florida. Myself and my good friend, Reverend Kayla Ray from Beyond Earth Healing uh, are going to be there at that event doing readings and all sorts of good things. So if you're in the area, you should absolutely come by uh, and check the event out. Uh, it's got a really great uh, bill of speakers and guests. Of course, I'll be there as well, and I would love to see you. So for the entire month of December, all three, because we're going to take one of these days off, the 25th off. It's Christmas, so we're going to be doing all kinds of cool readings uh, this month. So let's get started with some requests, see how people are thinking about uh, for the, <clears throat> see what people are thinking about for the show. So let's see. Hey, Curb. So now I'm going to go through and read the comments, right? So, hey, Jeff, absolutely. You can get a reading. Hey, Kristen, how are you? Sure, Cass. Cassandra has, hasn't been on in a while. You can absolutely have a reading. Hey, Cheyenne. Hey, Chris. Uh, Anita, I can add you to the list as well. Do, 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 do. Hello, Kristen. Hey, Scott. Hello, Sandra. Hey, Claudia. Sure, Kristen. Sure, Scott. I'll add you as well. Hi, Henny. Hi, Carrie Elizabeth. Do, 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 do. Hey, Lakin, how are you? EM, I, yep, absolutely, I'll add you to the list. Uh, Angelina, absolutely. Joe, absolutely. Cheyenne, absolutely. Do, 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 do. Sure, Lake, and you can have a reading as well. Absolutely. Henny, I'll add you as well. Cassandra, I have you as well. 
Uh, Henny, I got you. Cassie, I'm adding you. There's so many people. It takes a bit of time. I'm sorry. Yes, Cheyenne, I got you. Teresa, I have you as well. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Aaliyah. Uh, do, do, do. You absolutely can't have a reading. Sandra, you as well. Sure, absolutely. Robin, you as well. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Okay. <clears throat> so, whew, here's the list that I have. <laughs> here's the list I have. If you don't hear your name, don't get upset. Just put it in the comments and I'll grab it. I was reading it quickly, so. Devel, I'll add you as well. So I have Jeff, Cassandra, Anita, Kristen, Scott, Gary, Elizabeth, E.M., Angelina, Joe, Cheyenne, Lakin, Henny, Cassie, which is different than Cassandra, Teresa, Aaliyah, Sandra, Robin, and Devel. That's who I have. Um, If I missed you, let me know. This is the time to let me know so that I can get you on the list. <clears throat> Excuse me, so I can get you on the list, right? So, so we did a tarot unboxing. Excuse me. We did a tarot unboxing of the Eight Coins Tattoo Tarot a couple of weeks ago. Uh, if you haven't seen that one, uh, check it out as well on my YouTube channel. Um, I appreciate that. Um, while you're there, you should subscribe so that you stay up to date on those things. I can't seem to get my microphone to do what it is I want it to do, which is to stay forward for me. Now it wants to spin the other way. So, um, so we did a review of the box of the of the deck. It is a very beautiful deck. There's a little bit, of, you can see, here's the book. The book is, oh, rats. Um, the book is heavily illustrated and annotated. So, I mean, it's just a, the book itself is, <clears throat> the book itself is quite a feat um, as well. So we'll do that. Uh, in addition, there's a big postery reading chart which we'll do and then the deck um comes in here so here's the box here's the deck so um so this is the eight coins tattoo tarot hi abby it is a beautiful deck absolutely it's a beautiful deck I'm going to be, I'll be very honest with you about the difference between, like there's, I have a little bit of dissonance between say the box and the cards a little bit. Maybe I just, I don't really know, but I, it's not to say I don't love the cards. I do. I wanted, I guess maybe, um, I was feeling a little bit more painted. I just, I had an expectation and, uh, it was it was incorrect and that is okay. So let's uh, let's see how the deck reads. It definitely it's not this is a deck I have a lot of experience with, uh, in that I only got it a couple weeks ago and uh, really haven't done many or any readings with it. Claudia, did you want a reading? Did I miss you? Kathy, i.e., I'll add you to the list. Um, so let's see how the deck reads tonight live in person. See how it goes. Um, so if you are just joining us, we're doing the Eight Coins Tattoo Tarot here live on 
Tarot Tuesday. It's gonna. It might take me a little bit longer to do readings tonight, only because the deck is new, and I'll be kind of trying to figure out what the suits are and things like that uh, live while you're watching me do it, which I do every week, of course. Abby, I'll add you to the list as well. All right, so this one is for Jeff. So first bunch, Jeff, Cassandra, Anita, Kristen, Scott, Carrie, Elizabeth, EM, others after that. <laughs> Thanks, Claudia. I appreciate that. All right. So first one up is the um, Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords, so Jeff... Um, <clears throat> so the seven of swords, Jeff, Jeff, the suit of swords is the suit of the mind, thoughts, ideas, and knowledge. And this is the suit of seven of swords. What the seven of swords here, and so I'm going to read intuitively, so I'm going to tell you what I know about the seven of swords, but I'm also going to read intuitively from what I get from the images and what's happening. The seven of swords talks a little bit about being mindful that your ideas are staying collected together. You can see here that we've got a sword in the hand, We've got some swords in a quiver, We've got some swords here along the shorefront. And so we just want to be mindful, Jeff, that our swords, our ideas are collected together again so that we can continue to move forward on this journey. And so Jeff, for you right now, you might be feeling a little bit scattered. You might be feeling like your ideas just seem to be jumpy, or you might even feel like you've left some good things behind or on the table or that some people have been walking off with your ideas. This is the time to make sure that all your ideas come back together, that you do some t a bit of reflection to make them kind of stick and work for you so that you can continue to move forward. You can see too that the character has a little bit of kind of human beast type thing going on. And again, that's just, that's gonna talk to me a little bit about balance. And maybe it's just that you're feeling out of balance that your ideas have kind of gone a little bit. All right, so let me know if that makes sense to you, Jeff. Uh, that's the first read uh, with this deck. Hello, Denali, how are you? Thanks. It's December, so we're wearing, you know, the hat of the... Well, I don't know, Lynn. I, I didn't add you, but I'll add you now. I can add you as well, Joy. All right. Sure, Kathy with a Y, I can add you. All right. So Jeff, let me know if that made sense to you. Um, leave a comment in the box. Let me know if it resonated. All right. So Cassandra, let's see what's going on with you. And let's, uh, let's read you for you tonight. And it is the Ten of Cups. The Ten of Cups. So Cups, as we know, is a suit of emotions, relationships. Yes, love and romantic relationships, but also just emotionally important relationships. And the Ten of Cups talks a lot about, you know how I read, right? Eight to ten in terms of a path or a journey or a cycle, as it were. <clears throat> and the Ten of Cups talks a lot about kind of a, a, a final, kind of a, a completion, if you will, uh, of the relationship and how much that relationship meant. So if you look at the card, you can see the cups are kind of stacked up here. You see rainbows and you see olive branches, which talk to olive branches talk to you about peace, tranquility, a coming together. You've got roses along the bottom, and the people holding the hands. This talks about how this, how your relationship has kind of grown, evolved, and reaches reached this kind of stage in its 
the completion of it this this stage. It's not to say the end of a relationship, but rather the end of this phase of the relationship so that you're more prepared to go into the next one. If we're reading in a cycle, we know that it goes from beginning to end, beginning to end, beginning to end. And the Ten of Cups here talks about that kind of beginning to end and then ready for the beginning part to begin again. So it's kind of a, a recognition of how much that this relationship means, how much it's taught you, how much you've grown with it, and how much it's given you in order for you to give to others or to give to the next phase in the relationship. So that's for you. Hopefully that makes sense for you, Cassandra. Let me know in the comments. Apologize for my voice. A little gravelly tonight. Hey, Sandy, how are you? Don't throw your phone. <laughs> they're, they're not really lights, they're just bolts, honey. Well, Judy, if you'd like a reading, I can add you to the list uh, and we'll see how it goes. I read for about an hour, so I read till a little after 10 um, and, we, and we have a good list going together. Yeah, Cassandra, don't think about it as in terms of a next relationship. Think about it as in terms of a next cycle. All right, this brings us to Anita. I gotta tell you that the deck shuffles pretty well. <clears throat> All right. So, Anita, this, and I swear I'm shuffling them, this is the nine of cups so again we just saw cups with cassandra we have the nine of cups cups is suit of emotions relationships right and the nine of cups talks about kind of a uh, almost kind of a celebration of um how things are going a presentation of things within the relationship you can see how things are kind of lined up you can see how they're honored cherished treasured and that's really kind of what i'm getting out of this card for you right now anita is it within your relationship, you need to kind of start to put the things onto pedestals, put them into places where they can be honored, cherished, recalled, looked at, and, and enjoyed and celebrated. This is the indicator of a relationship coming, or at least a stage coming closer to a fruition as we saw with Cassandra and the Ten of Cups. But here it's kind of that pause to look forward or look backwards and pause to celebrate how far it's come. So that's for you, Anita. Let me know if that makes sense. Katrina, I'll add you to the list as well. Again, we read for about an hour, so we'll see how it goes. Thanks, Lee, I appreciate that. All right, so Kristen, let's talk about you. So it's Kristen, Scott, Carrie Elizabeth, EM, Angelina, Joe, and others after that. What is it? What is it? What is it? It's the Queen of Cups. It's all cups tonight. Everybody needs relationship ish. Everybody needs relationship advice, Kristen. So the Queen of Cups, remember that the Queen is the kind of quiet confidant of the King, right? The Queen is the one that offers balance, the yin, the feminine energy to the relationship. And right now, Kristen, that's what I'm getting for you, is that this is a time for you to add that kind of royal um, feminine energy into the relationship. Make certain um, as you and you and your King are kind of making decisions about where this relationship is going, that you are using your insight, you are using your counsel, and you are using your wisdom in nurturing in relation in energies to balance out these decisions that you two are making as a couple. 
So the queen really is for you right now, Kristen, begging you to take that royal leadership um, kind of throne um, in the relationship and offer this counsel, this kind of balanced, kind of nurturing, maternal, feminine energy into the decisions that are being made for you, for your relationship, and for the relationship of your family. So that's for you, Kristen. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm glad it does, Anita. Well, hello, Jane from London. I will add you to the list, absolutely. All right. So if you're a first timer, uh, let me know in the comments. Say that you're a first timer. Uh, the crew knows what to do. Uh, we have a nice little welcome wagon for people who've never watched the show before. We're reading from the Eight Coins Tattoo Tarot. Uh, we read for about an hour, so about till about ten um, Eastern U.S. Eastern, a little after maybe, and uh, then we do it again next week with a different deck. So you might miss out this week. Don't worry. We'll catch up next week. Sure, Kate, I'll add you to the list. All right, so this brings us to Scott. Scott, let's see what happens when we shuffle one more time. You're welcome. You're welcome, Chris. I'm glad. Um, so, Scott, for you, it's the Page of Pentacles. So Pentacles is our physical world suit, right? It's our resources suit. Um, it's the things we use to get the things we want. I often talk about this in terms of time, money, and energy, right? So this, these are the resources that we use to activate in our life. And the Page of Pentacles is the first of kind of the suit cards or the kind of royal suite within this particular suit. The Page is young. The page is naive, and the page kind of has a lot going on. So the page first needs to kind of observe what's happening. There's a lot of different, a lot of changes maybe happening or some newness within your resources or how your energy, time, and money are spent. And you need to be a little bit mindful, taking in the lessons of how best to use it. I'm going to fall out. This hat is hot. <laughs> um how does he how does santa do this all the damn time i'll be honest all right so um so for you scott it's just about kind of a, a little bit of a naivete around your resources maybe it's a new resource or a new aspect to the resources and you're not certain on how to use it look for some insights be observant learn gather things together Make sure that you're paying attention to the lessons and other people around you. This is about giving things a little bit of time, giving things a little bit of observation and insight before you consider yourself an expert at this new set of resources, this new time, money, or energy thing that you're working on. Kate, I did put you on the list. <laughs> and Lynn, you're on the list as well. Debbie, IE, I'll put you on the list as well. Like I said, we read till about 10. You're welcome, Scott. Hopefully that made sense to you. All right, this brings us to Carrie Elizabeth, EM, Angelina, Joe, Cheyenne, Lakin, Henny, Cassie, and others after that. Again, we're reading from the Eight Coins Tattoo Tarot, and you're seeing me do it live, right? I've not practiced with this deck very much. I've not really, um, <laughs> yeah. It's that, that the hat is not breathable, but I appreciate it. Sure, Talisha, I'll add to the list. All right. 
one more shovel. So you're seeing, you're kind of seeing how it works. Kind of, um, you're seeing how it works to get used to a new deck. I'm just doing it on the internet because you know, jump right in. Why don't you with brand new decks? All right. So Carrie Elizabeth, this is the star card. <clears throat> the star card is always one of my very favorite cards because it talks about the relationship between the um, metaphysical world and the physical world. And what this is asking you to do, Carrie Elizabeth, again, reading intuitively, so it's a little different than the Rider weight, but what this is asking you to do is keep an eye towards this more metaphysical world for yourself right now. This is where your guidance is coming from. This is where you need to be looking. So when we look at the Rider weight, the symbolism is a little bit different, but here, this is about being observant to the metaphysical, being observant to your higher self, the universe, the divine, while being here grounded here in the physical world. So you always want to be looking for that and then looking for ways that you can make these connections because this metaphysical world is your um, is really kind of your North Star, so to speak. So this is where your guidance is going to be coming from for the next little while for you. So look towards the star card, look towards, kind of look towards the stars, look towards the metaphysical world, your higher self, your spiritual guidance, and use and rely on that guidance in order for you um, to move forward through the physical world of the next little while. So hopefully that made sense for you, Carrie Elizabeth. Move things around. We might be. This may be the last week you see this hat. <laughs> you may end up seeing, or maybe switch back to the top hat. Uh, Veronica with a K, I will add you the list. We read until about 10, um, a little after. So we got about another half hour, 40 minutes. And if we get there, we get there. If not, we do it again every week. So you're welcome to come back next week for a reading too. All right, this brings us to EM. You're welcome, Carrie Elizabeth. All right, EM, this one's for you. And it is the Nine of Wands. <clears throat> Battered, beaten, bruised, hard work. Uh, the Nine of Wands is a suit of work, task, effort. It's the things you do to get the things you want. And the nine talks about kind of a kind of a long path for you right now. EM. It's feeling a little bit like you're you've you've learned a lot of hard lessons as it, as this path has gone on. Um, and right now you're kind of in a, a real hardship. You can see the dark clouds going on. In fact, I see a lot of darkness in most of this deck. So not about most of you. Most of this deck talks a little bit about kind of the darkness and some of the shaded areas of our lives. But for you, EM, I feel like you've really had to struggle with a lot of this work, this tasking that you've been doing. It hasn't come to you so easily. You've taken some beatings, taken some bruisings. Um, but on the other side of this is that you're still standing. You're still able to move forward. And with it are the lessons of how to do this better. But I get a sense of long, hard journey, the mountains, the darkness, difficulty. You can see the character in the face. Just a little bit of a struggle. But you're strong enough to get through it. Now it's going to be about time to kind of make sure, again, we're putting everything together for you. Getting things kind of lined up so it's not so battered. Make things start to work. So the Spirit's saying, work smart, not hard. For the next little while because you've been working hard not smart now it's time to take the lessons and turn that around thank you spirit for that i appreciate getting that easy guidance that makes things easier for me catch up with the comments hang on Who is Carrie Elizabeth? Carrie Elizabeth is, she's our, she was the previous reader, Reedy. Pre 
Absolutely. Everybody get a little love for Shalia. I knew that she was coming up on something. So we'll give everybody put a little comment in your box. Well, thank you, Veronica. I appreciate that. You're welcome, Ian. All right, this brings us to Angelina. So it's Angelina, Joe, Cheyenne, Lakin. All right, Angelina, it's the Knight of Cups. Lots of cups tonight. There's the Knight of Cups. Lots of cups tonight. So Angelina, we know the cups is a suit of emotions, right? This is our emotions, relationships, love, romance, things like that, the kind of the watery side of life. And the Knight of Cups talks about a change within the relationship for you. Um, so you can see here that the knight character is kind of steeled against this change. You can see the cup kind of in front of the knight. You can see the, you know, kind of fight for your, getting the words fight for your honor. Right now we've got a whole Robin Hood thing going on. So fight for your honor. I'm getting a little sense of that kind of a, a stealing for this change that's going to be coming in your relationship, Angelina. So either this is a new relationship or probably more likely just a change in the relationship that you're having with this person. I don't feel like it's romantic. I feel like it's familial. Um, but the knight always to me signifies change. And that's because when the king wants a change, the king sends the knight. So being att be attentive now, Angelina, to the messages within this relationship. Be aware of the indicators that suggest to you that there's a change and be ready for that change for yourself and for your own emotional protection. So if that makes sense to you, Angelina. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, Sheila. All right, this brings us to Joe. Joe, Cheyenne, Lake, and Henny, Cassie, Teresa, and there's others after that. It's quite a list. Eight coins is very popular. Hopefully I'm doing it justice. Hopefully I'm doing justice. It's a beautiful deck. Um, I can see where this deck um, what could have some future additions. Um, let's see if you're thinking the same thing I am. I'm going to show the next card. You tell me what you think could be changed about the deck itself. Yeah, it could be. It's, it's you know, familial. It's relationships, right, where you're emotionally invested, Angelina. All right, Joe, this one's for you, and it is the Hermit. It's also one of my very favorite cards, um, mostly because I have a good friend who identifies with this card, and so it always it's always nice to think about him. Reverend Mario from Spirit of the Storm Radio. We've known each other for like 20, 30 years now. Long, long time, and he identifies with this card. All right, so Joe, this is the Hermit card, and the Hermit card kind of holds the light of truth, also a squid. Um, holds the light of truth, and the hermit looks into the light of truth and beckons people to the knowledge. I feel like we get this card a lot for you, Joe, in that you're kind of the old man on the mount, and it, within you is a lot of knowledge, and you want to beg people to come to that light of knowledge, that light of truth. You want to, I think what I want you to really take from this card is that you're looking within to dispel the myths, dispel the rumors, dispel the thing, the untruths, not the lies necessarily, but yes, lies, but untruths, and get right down to the actionable, retainable, retrievable knowledge. Joe, this card really is about mentor teacher roles for you. And I feel like that's where you need to be. And maybe it's just the season where you're going to be gathered around with family and friends, and they're going to look to you for this guidance, this much missed, much needed, and not often had guidance. Not that you don't have it, just that they're not available to it as often as they should be. A 
more colors, darker colors. Certainly, my thought, what, I'll, I'll put up the next card for you, Cheyenne, because you're next on the list. So Cheyenne, Lakin, Henny, Cassie, Teresa, Aaliyah, and others after that. Could be. I'm glad you're loving it. Oh, you're welcome for doing that. I think it's a borderless edition. What's nice about this deck is if you, it's hard to see, right here, it says drawn number, and it tells you what drawn number it is. Um, so that's interesting because you can see kind of how the artist made the deck. But I submit to you, this will be a pretty cool borderless deck. All right. So Cheyenne, so Lana, if you're listening, thank you. Also, future version might be a borderless deck. All right. So uh, not that I particularly love borderless decks, but I can see where this would lend itself to that type of artistry and creation. So, all right, Cheyenne, for you, it's the three of wands, right? So wands is a suit of work. The three of wands suggests that you've made kind of this first um, milestone on this journey of work, right? The two of wands is on the other side of this pond. And the three of wands says, you've worked very, very hard. You've reached this goal. You're now looking back for how far you, what just what you're able to accomplish when you really put your mind to it and early success. Things are still going in the right direction. Use the energy of this success to propel your work forward, to keep this task going, to keep moving forward on the project. Remember, there's more to come. This is the end point. This is just the first milestone. Maybe it's a small one, but celebrate it. Use the energy for it. Take the lessons for it and then jump forward on it. I'm glad, I'm glad, Joe. All right, this brings us to Lakin. And then Henny, you're up after that. Cassie, Teresa, Aaliyah, Sandra, Robin, Devell. All right, so for Lakin, it is the devil card, the devil card. So the devil card is interesting here. Um, this is a little different, of course, than the Rider Waite, which is what makes this deck so intriguing, is that it follows the Rider Waite, but the imagery is different, right? So with the imagery and the symbolism being different, the readings are also different. Here, the devil is a much more formidable figure here you can see that the two figures are almost mini devils bound and tied, right? So, Lakin, for you, um, the devil, which is a major arcana card, so we want to pay attention to the messaging. We want to be really mindful of the things that restrict us, really mindful of the things that aren't serving our higher good, really mindful of kind of the... the <clears throat> untruths, lies, deceit, deception, the things that take us off of our path, right? The devil is all of, about addiction and self-imposed restrictions and self-imposed bad choices. All the, That's what the devil really talks about. And so here we have the same kind of thing, that these self-imposed restrictions, these bad choices, these um, bad habits, if you will, are restricting you. So is it time to revisit them? Is it time, have you slipped back into some things that maybe you shouldn't be slipping into? Are they serving your higher good? Should we cast them aside? Maybe this is an indicator of maybe where you've been and where you now must need to go. So the devil card for you. And I normally you get the strength card, but. Okay, she Sheila, good luck.
All right, this brings us to Henny. <clears throat> so it looks like Cassandra's saying Lakin is going to throw her card. Oh, look, there's a countdown to Christmas in the corner. There's a little Easter egg in the video of a Santa Advent calendar in the corner. I think next week you're going to see the mantle change too, I'd argue. All right, this brings us to Henny. All right, Henny, it's the Fool. <clears throat> this is such a delightful card, right? I mean, it's so innocent. It's so, um, it's so. I don't want to say juvenile, but so young and so bright and so effervescent and so just light and airy. Um, the Fool is, of course, the journey we're all on, right? The tarot is the Fool's journey. And so for you, Henny, right now, you're on the first steps, but the divine is guiding you, even if you can't see it, even if you're not sure of what's going on, you can see the snake and the flower, right? The balance, the yin and yang, the good and the bad, but you can also see that the divine, the sun is guiding you. So while your journey now must <clears throat> continue, Excuse me, and you must take the leap of faith that you need to, even if you're not feeling prepared and can't see where you're going. You're going to take that step, honey. So you've been resistant, I think, to taking the step. I feel like you've, you're, you're distrusting of where you need to go. The fool card tells you just to start moving forward. We're going to figure it out in time. We'll figure it out in time but you need to get moving on it. Okay, honey? All right. So this brings us to Cassie, not Cassandra. We've already done Cassandra. You can see how red my face is getting. I'm gonna fall out. I'm gonna fall out before we get to the clock. <laughs> Is hot in his hat. New deck, new hat. Maybe it's too many new things. Too many new things. All right. <clears throat> Cassie, the death card. This is also a very beautiful card, right? We see death's embrace of the maiden, right? We see the uh, we see the journey, the the path here between back to the towers, which will be reminiscent of the moon card. Death talks about change death is death can mean death in this case it does not death means change and that we must embrace the death of this thing that we've been holding on to so for you cassie you've been kind of hoping to revive this thing hoping to breathe more life into this thing hoping against hope from just one little more thing out of it it's dead leave it gone it's time for you to accept that this is gone accept that this thing has changed and allow yourself to move forward into the next part of the journey into the next thing that's what death is all about embrace the change and move forward on this next piece so that's for you cassie hopefully that makes sense let me know Yeah, I'm getting some. I think I could, EM. I might do just that. I might do just that. Put a little decoration on my hat for so I can be in a cooler, a cooler hat. It was a good idea. And we need a new hat around here anyway. All right, Teresa, this one's for you. And it's the King of Wands. The King of Wands. This is a cool card as well because it talks about work and it talks about decision. <clears throat> but what I like about this is that the King character isn't just making choice and moving ahead, but rather looking into the, the flame, the kind of 
the truth, the flame of truth, right? There's a lot of imagery here about reflection and seeking guidance from within. And so for this task, this work project, the thing you do to get the thing you want, Teresa, you do need to make a decision based on the information that you have, based on the reflection that you've done, and based on the truths of the situation and the work that you're facing. So you've been kind of him on a little bit about what to do. Now is the time to just strike, just make the decision and go. Um, there's really, at this point, there's kind of, you know what the right thing is to do. It's just that you're, I think you're hesitant about it maybe being more difficult and you're looking for an easier way. The King of Wands says there's only decision and indecision. So hopefully that makes sense. Good night, Claudia. Thank you for coming by. I should mention that too. I'm not going to be putting the video up tonight after the show. Uh, I have an early day again tomorrow. As my day job kind of winds down here. It's winding up. All right, this brings us to Aaliyah. Aaliyah, Sandra, Robin, and Devel, and others after that. Oh, thanks, Teresa. That's nice of you to say. All right. Aaliyah. It is the <clears throat> Ace of Pentacles. So now the Ace of Pentacles has the unique privilege of being the cover. And the Ace of Pentacles is, of course, about a new opportunity for resources. So the Ace of Pentacles is about you being given from the universe, from the divine, from the higher power, an opportunity to for new resources, time, money, energy. I feel like this is related to your business. So maybe while in the past your readings have kind of been around kind of winnowing down the, the kind of the clutter and the noise around the work that you do, the, the things you do to get your resources. Now that you've gotten the noise quieted down, it's going to be time for you to look for the opportunities to really capitalize on these things and look for ways to gain new resources for yourself and for your family. The Ace of Pentacles. So maybe that's already come for you. I don't know. All right, Sandra, this one's for you. So, Aliyah, if that makes sense, let me know. Leave it in the comments. This brings us to Sandra. <coughs> I'm also fighting a little bit of a cold, so that's not fair either. Sandra, this is Three of Wands. We've seen Three of Wands tonight. And is, Wands remembers the suit of work, the things we do to get the things we want. And the Three of Wands represents kind of our first milestone on this path. So you have come across the pond. You're looking back at the work you've learned and accomplished. And this is an okay place to be right now. It's not the end point, though. So look back on it, reflect on it, see how you've accomplished this goal take the lessons from it, and then um, continue to move forward down the path of wands. So for you right now, maybe you're at a point where you're feeling a little bit milestoney. You've done something good. That's great. Or you're coming up on something good. That's great. Use this time to celebrate it, but then don't stop. <laughs> we'll see how I feel when I get done, honey. We'll see, or Jeff, rather. They do, and if you follow, I tagged eight coins. Um, I tagged eight coins in the in the show description, and you should absolutely go and follow that community. Um, so you can see some of. Uh, her work and follow her on Instagram. Beautiful, beautiful tattoo artistry. Um, 
it really does make me want to go and um, get some work done. <laughs> All right, this brings us to Robin Nundevel. So this one's for you, Robin. And it is what? The Four of Pentacles. The Four of Pentacles talks to me about um, being steadfast and almost guarded and um, mindful of our resources we need to make difficult decisions about our resources, our time, money, energy, and how those things are spent. A wonderful message for the holidays, right? When our time, our money, and our resources are widely sought after by many, many constituencies, this is a time where we hold them close. This is a time where we guard them fiercely, and the in this. Now we see this in the Rider Waite, but this card, maybe it's just the grimace on the skull or the fire and the smoke, but it talks to me a lot about being more guarded, more closed, more decisive, more in charge of our resources than ever before. So Robin, that's for you. That's where you need to be right now. Well, I don't know, Karen. I can add you the list. I'm doubtful that we'll get there. I read for about maybe another 20 minutes. Um, but I do private readings. Uh, if you're interested, message the page. Um, and I can guide you through uh, what you need to know. At least from the tarot or the mediumship perspective. Not a substitute for legal advice. Or professional counseling but I'm happy to offer whatever help I can. All right, Devel, this one's for you. And this is the six of coins. So now we're starting to see a lot more of, we're starting to see a lot more of uh, our resources, right? We've moved from kind of the cups in the beginning and now we're focusing on kind of resources right we're talking about time money energy and the six of resources is talking again about another little bit of a milestone here where we're starting to see that we're take with things we've achieved a little bit of balance and now we can kind of maybe take a little bit of our resources out and put it to good use but be mindful that we always need to keep things in balance so as we're adding resources and taking resources out like a bank account, we need to make sure that things are remaining in balance, Devel. It's about wise choices. It's about not overspending your time, money, energy, but making sure that you're spending it in the right ways that achieve the better purpose. That's what balance is mostly about, but also not dwindling things away to the point where you're so strapped resource-wise <clears throat> that you can't continue on for yourself. So it's a little bit, balance is a little bit about both of those things. So hopefully that helps develop. I'm glad, Robin. Woo! Almost kicked this whole deck off the table. That would have been the end of it. <laughs> that would have been the end of the show. I would have just said if we're, if they're all going to jump off the table, we're going to jump off with it. All right. This brings us to Kathy I.E., Abby, Lynn, and others after that. Now that I'm reading it like in a flow, it's the, the deck is certainly a lot easier for me to read. If you're interested in the deck, I encourage you to get it. There's a link um, to Goddess Elite, which is where I get the my decks from, which... I routinely say in my videos is in Lorain, Ohio, but that is not right. It is North Olmsted, and I know that, and I still can't stop myself. It's on Lorain Road in North Stedham, Ohio. So you can go in the store and tell Melissa that I sent you, or you can purchase online and tell her that I sent you as well. She'd appreciate that. Hello, Melinda. How are you? Um... But if you're not, and, and she'll ship worldwide, so it's a nice little store there. Um, it's little, it's huge. Nice store. All right, Kathy IE. What's up with you? And it is the Queen of Pentacles. So I'm shuffling. You can hear me, and it's taking me a while to get them there. 
um, and I shuffled them for a good hour um, when I got them, <clears throat> so that they would be, um, so they wouldn't be in the, they wouldn't be in order. <laughs> so the Queen of Pentacles. This is kind of an interesting card because it talks to me a lot about knowledge, right? Again, the Queen is the partner card to the King. The Queen is often the knowledge center of how things are. And you can see that the queen is introspective here, eyeing up the resources, looking into the resources, using her knowledge, wisdom, and guidance in order to inform how resources should be used and spent, time, money, energy, how resources should be used, spent, collected, earned, gained. This card, like the queen of any other suit, begs you, Kathy, to take your place by the king to make sure that your voice is heard and to use and to look to look at the decision holistically, not just from a balance sheet standpoint, because I feel like that's often the case. We look and say, this costs this much, no. This costs this much, no. This costs this much, yes. But rather what you need to be doing is looking at it holistically. What is the best expenditure of money? What What is our time worth? What is our energy worth? I feel like you're making decisions linearly and the queen begs you to look more holistically at the kingdom of resources. So hopefully that makes sense to you, Kathy, i.e. Hey, Jamie, how are you? <laughs> I feel like poor Jamie, she feels like she's been invited to a meeting here and she's come in late. Don't feel like you... Don't feel bad, Jamie. It happens to the it happens to the best of us. It's okay. We do this every week, right? We do it every week. There's no reason to be, no reason to feel bad. We do it every week. Next week, I think, if you're on the mailing list, maybe you can remind me of what the deck is next week. I think it's Hero's Journey. Abby, for you, is the hermit. Again, the hermit here is about the light of truth and beckoning people to the kind of light of truth, the light of knowledge. The hermit has a lot of wisdom to gain, um, and you need to beg people to this point, Abby. So for you, I really feel like that this is gonna. I'm not gonna flip this a little bit for you, not because I not because I gave one reading earlier. I want to give a different reading now, but rather, Abby, I think what you need to be doing is following the light of truth following the light of knowledge and um, making sure that you're seeing the truth for what it is. So you're going to be seeking the truth in the wisdom of others right now, Abby. And that's going to prepare you to share that. I get a sense of you being kind of in the middle of things, almost triangulating. I'll go learn this, then I'll tell you. I'll go learn this more, and I'll tell you more. Um, but for you right now, it's about seeking your own wisdom, seeking your own truth, and your own knowledge. So hopefully that made sense for you, Jamie, or um, Abby. Well, hello, Melinda, and welcome. So we, so Melinda, everybody, welcome Melinda to the show. Melinda, we do this show every week from 9 to 10-ish, um, U.S. Eastern. We do different decks every single week, um, and we do one-card readings. All you need to do to get on the list is say you want to be on the list, just to give you a sense of how the list goes. Those are the readings we've done in the readings and the whole list ahead. So we do the very best we can to get them done in an hour, but uh, that's okay because we um, we do it every week. We do it every week. And on occasion, and I'll do one in January, we do a first-timer show where first-timers come in and identify, and they get thumped to the top of the list. All right, Lynn, this one's for you. Lynn with, a, Lynn with an E. It's the world card, which is 21, right? And the world card is, this is, again, different from the rider weight. The world card is, in this, in this deck, is about perspective. I get a sense of the world the world card being kind of above it all, not egotistically or arrogantly, but rather 
the perspective, the wisdom, the experience that gives you a little bit of a scholarly distance from the things that are happening in your world, Lynn. And this is a time for you to employ that long view, that distance view, that kind of um, that experience that you have and see the world and help other people understand it uh, in that way. This card activates all the other suits, wreaths, coins, cups, wands, swords, and uses these things to make sense of the world for themselves and for others, right? It's a very kind of, it's a very, it's a very big card perspective. And that's what I get out of this card for you, Lynn. So this is a time to kind of elevate, levitate, use your experience to see, see the whole world for what it is. Almost like 30,000 foot view kind of stuff. I'm glad, Abby. Well, Melinda, I'll add you to the list. Again, we read, we're, we're going to read here for about another 10 minutes. We'll see how it goes. All right. Joy, you're next. Let's shuffle them up. And Joy, this one's for you. Temperance. Oh, Joy, you need temperance in your, in your life. Too much debauchery for you, Joy. Slow it down and go to church, will you? So temperance is about, it, so I get it right. Temperance is about cooling it down a little bit. Temperance is about keeping things in perspective. Temperance is about doing the, making the right choices. So think about this as opposite the devil card, right? In fact, it's opposite the devil card, right? Where we want to keep things in making good choices for the higher good. It's about not too much of any one thing, about everything in moderation. It's about our connectedness to our higher purpose, about doing things for our higher purpose and doing things in a way that doesn't take us off that path. So slow it down, Joy. Get to church. Get some God in you. <laughs> kind of bring it down a little bit. Um, and, and just make... You're welcome, Lynn. I'm happy to provide it. Um, so just for you, it's about making sure that you're keeping things in perspective. Not too much of any one thing. Really, I think that this is a tendency for you just to kind of go overboard a little bit. And this the temperance card wants to just pull you back a bit. Make sure you understand that we're sticking to the meaning. We're sticking to the purpose. We're sticking to the calling. That's the thing that matters more than anything else. Serve it as opposed to the usual overindulgences or overabundances. Just find the sweet spot. All right, Kathy with a Y, which is different than Kathy with an IE, in case you hadn't figured that one out. So Kathy with a Y, let's see what's up for you. So it's Kathy with a Y, Judy, Katrina, Jane, and others after that. But we only got about five or six more minutes. All right, Kathy with a Y. We have the sun card. <clears throat> the sun card is about growth and clarity, right? The sun, the sun is also a card that exists in a pairing, the sun and the moon. The sun allows us to see things clearly. It allows us to grow things. The moon is a bit of an illusion, a reflection. But for right now, you're in a period, Kathy, of growth. And the sun allows you to see that growth, understand that growth, enjoy that growth. And that's kind of where you need to be right now. Enjoy the abundance around you. Enjoy that things are growing. Enjoy the patience of watching it grow, learning and understanding that and seeing how it grows because you're going to need that as time goes on. You're going to need to recall the lessons of growth. But for right now, bask in the warmth, enjoy the sunshine, enjoy the growth of the world around you and within you and allow yourself to really experience this 
and acknowledge that you're on this growth period in this growth cycle and just let it let it go for you just that's what you need to be everything you see is true right now doubt no more all right judy you're up next oops All right, it is the four of wands, the four of wands, back to work, back to work. All right, Judy, so the four of wands, again, it's a, this is about, so we've had this early milestone, right? We've seen this already twice with the three of wands. We've had this early milestone. Now we're starting to move forward. This is where our work starts to take on a bit of a finer edge, right? And so I like this card because it talks about that kind of finessing, that artistry, that making the work work for us and really kind of using that early win, using that milestone we've you've just accomplished with your job or your work or whatever you put your effort into, Judy. And it, it is, it's allowing you to kind of, or telling you that you need to kind of be deliberate, be um, exquisite in your work, in your effort, do things because it's precise and it's right and do it in a way that really shows your craftsmanship, shows your skills, shows the kind of elaborate, exquisite, pure nature of the work that you do, right? We're seeing the wands in the vase. That's what gives me that meaning. So that's for you, Judy. All right, this brings us to Katrina. So I'm not going to read the whole list. I'm bringing it. This brings us to Katrina. Because I want to, because we're just kind of going minute by minute here at the end. All right. So it's the Two of Cups, Katrina. So the Two of Cups is about the formation of a new relationship. You can see the hands that are kind of gathering. If you follow me on Instagram, I just commented on uh, Lestrani's uh, Two of Cups from the Santa Muerte Tarot right there. Um, it's one of my favorite versions of the Two of Cups, but this ain't so bad. So the Two of Cups here talks about the a, a, a new togetherness in the relationship. Um, I get a sense, this card kind of strikes me as business dealings uh, because of the handshake, but it really is about holding hands and coming together. It's about worlds kind of joining. And in that new connection or new reconnection we're getting to know each other once again so this is a place for us to share a meal share a glass of wine and see what can grow from this relationship this new friendship and this new aspect of our relationships so just be mindful of this katrina that there's a new relationship or new aspect of relationship or budding one emerging one just be mindful of it it's a time to take it slowly it's a time to see what can grow from it all right thanks honey i hope so it's it's just a you know it's the it's just a winter thing i guess all right this brings us to our last read of the night and that is for jane um again we do this each and every week so don't be upset that i didn't get to you um, join me next week. I do private readings, and I thank you very much uh, for for taking those on and <clears throat> and getting those with me. It does help the show grow quite a bit. Um, so I help. I I'm I'm glad for that. Um, this week we will see a new uh, tarot flip through. I actually, oh, it's a tarot flip through of the Eight of Coins deck. Um, January 12th and 13th, if you're in the Fort Myers, Florida area, or feeling like you want a trip, and then come see me at the Southwest Florida UFO and Paranormal Con. It's going to be an excellent, excellent lineup. And so, Jane, for you, it's the Ace of Cups. So we're coming full circle here. We began with cups. We're going to end with cups. And, Jane, for you, I want you to pay attention to a new aspect within your relationship. The Ace of Cups always talks about that kind of new relationship smell right things are flowing over it's 
we're infatuated and the energy's high and the resource is high and our cup floweth over, so to speak. We're very, very happy, the doves and things are kind of flowing. So pay attention for this sign from the divine, this sign from your higher power as, as to a new relationship or a new aspect of your relationship. So we often get confused when we say things like new relationship and you're like, we have been married for 25 years. We also mean new aspect of the relationship, but also it could just mean a new friendship or rekindling in some important and meaningful way. So I think that's fun. I think we should all look for ways to rekindle our important relationships uh, in the week ahead and particularly in this season. If you're enjoying the show and you're new or you enjoy the show and you're not, um, I would l love for you to exchange a little energy with me and um, like my Facebook page, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, all that fun stuff. Uh, join the Dr. Mystical Gathering. Um, I'm adding a content element this week or this month uh, for only members of the gathering. So look for that there um, in the next few days. So hopefully, um, hopefully you'll do that. Hopefully you enjoyed the show enough to like and subscribe across everywhere. There's a link in the video description for that. This was the Eight of Coins Tattoo Tarot, a wonderful deck, wonderfully illustrated. And that is the Ten of Swords, which is basically stick a fork in me, babes. I'm done. So friends, thanks for joining me again this week. I love Tarot Tuesday and I love it because of you. So thank you so much for that. I enjoy our time together and our energy exchange. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Thanks so much.